Hello, good morning, good afternoon, depending where you're joining us uh, from. Appreciate you all being on. Uh, my name is Zach Moore, and I'm going to be covering a webinar today on Tech Insights, efficient routing made simple with software. Uh, it's a lot of words there, but you know, hopefully I can boil it down and, and give you a concept of, uh, of what we hope to cover today. We're right here at 11 o'clock Eastern time. I see we do still have a few people joining uh, while they jump on. Just to introduce myself, uh, I'm a manager of solutions, engineering and enablement here at TransFinder. Uh, again, another mouthful, but the idea is I get to work with school districts all over the country trying to find the right technology solutions for the challenges they're facing. Uh, that's going to be a very relevant thing because that's really what we want to talk about today. Uh, with this webinar, just so you have some insight in what the goal is and, and what we're here to talk about, it really is a, a webinar we hope to aim at people that are utilizing old technology or uh, not utilizing technology at their school district today. Right? We really want to talk about why is there a need for technology what does the technology landscape look like for school districts right now? We'll cover some of our platform and some of the, the features we have, but really focusing on why is this benefiting school districts? Why is the investment in technology, the investment in time and money uh, worth making that change? So we'll try to highlight that. Uh, again, that's our, our target audience here today. Anyone that's uh, held off or been thinking about making the move or making the investment into bringing new technology in. And so, a uh, wide range of technology we're talking about. Obviously, routing software is a, a big piece of that, but we'll also be talking about uh, parent resources, parent tools, uh, driver tools, student ridership tools, uh, a lot of different components that all need to work together. Uh, and then finally, we'll wrap up talking about what does it look like to implement some of that technology. So that can be really key to, uh, we've heard that as a, a big fear and anxiety of making the, the jump, uh, of jumping into technology there. So I appreciate everybody who's joined. If you're on, uh, hopefully that's what you're looking at. We're happy to have uh, prospects that are, are not familiar with us here at TransFinder, as well as our own clients that maybe are, are working with legacy pieces of our technology or have not brought in all of the components they're hoping to into their, uh, their TransFinder platform. Perfect. So, to jump into things, I always like by, uh, to start by introducing uh, us as a company. TransFinder has been in business for over 35 years now, uh, dedicated to this K-12 space. So we work uh, specifically with school districts on uh, routing, logistics, uh, all of their transportation needs uh, across, the, uh, across the spectrum. Right now we have over 2,300 clients across the US and Canada. Uh, and we're really proud that we did win this past year the most innovative hardware and software technology uh, award at the Bus Technology Summit. So that's what I'm going to be talking about a little bit is some of that innovative software and hardware that we have. Like I said, I, I think we do bring a, a certain level of expertise when we talk about implementing this technology, the benefits districts are seeing with it, because we really are driving our technology based on what we're hearing from our clients. Right? We right now are proud to say one in three students get transported safer to school using our platform, but really the tools and solutions we have are the tools and solutions that our clients have asked for, right? They're the ones doing the work every day. You're the ones doing the work every day. So if you're struggling in, in transportation with uh, a lot of the common challenges we're hearing, we're hoping that our tools are going to be a good solution for solving some of those. And so what does that mean when we talk about challenges? We hear it day in and day out, some of the common ones, some of these may be sticking out to you. Uh, challenges with district communication has been top of mind, parent concerns. I'll be honest, sometimes when we talk about technology, the driver is not necessarily from the school district, but it's, uh, it's being pushed on them by their community and by parents. We see that quite a bit. Uh, driver shortages are always a, a major challenge that school districts are facing. So we'll talk about driver shortages how the technology is kind of helping deal with some of those problems. Uh, but there's a lot of new ones along the way, electric buses, student ridership, student behavior management, uh, lots of challenges that we hear. If you're seeing these and, and nodding your head, you're thinking I'm missing about another dozen or so that, that you're uh, considering things like budgetary needs, staff. Uh, I know there's a lot of challenges in, in transportation today. So this is what we're talking about. This is the landscape in context. 
that uh, we understand you're working in today. So our goal is to kind of go through the different technology components we're working with, uh, hopefully share some real life stories about how the tools we're bringing are addressing these problems directly. And again, if you uh, held off or hold back uh, on investing in technology, we really want to stress that now is the right time to look at investing into technology because the return on investment, the problems that you're able to solve through, uh, through a technology platform are huge. So that said, some important things to consider when you're looking at investing into a technology platform. One of the biggest things that we found, especially working in the industry for over 35 years now, is one of the big challenges that districts get into as they start investing into technology is there's a lot of moving pieces that go into that. Right? A lot of the time they're working with multiple different vendors to do one piece of transportation, another piece, and they have to try to get all of these pieces to kind of communicate. They've got to call up five different vendors when they're having an issue. Uh, we found it really important to be able to work with one partner that's going to be able to solve as many of your problems as possible, right? Less vendors rather than more is a consistent thing I hear from, uh, from the districts we work with. And so that's why we really tried to put together a platform that we hope addresses the needs across the transportation spectrum. And so a few of those things we talk about is your routing solution. You need a, a routing platform that's going to help you optimize routes, be more efficient with your routing, create safe routes, and communicate that route information out across the district internally, but also externally out to your, your parents. Leads into driver navigation, right? The ability to have turn by turn. This is key to be tied right into your platform, right? You wanna make sure whatever you're building in your routing platform is what your drivers are seeing out on the road as well. Ridership tracking, uh, again, being able to know who's riding. This is key and a key part of the platform, right? So we'll talk a little bit about the efficiency this can lead to, but obviously also the safety and, and also the parent aspect of being able to know who's riding, when they're riding. Uh, our parent app ties right into that, right? Again, big challenges that you see when you're working with different platforms and you're having to communicate that information out, but you're waiting on nightly pushes, right? Or, or data to go back and forth. Uh, much more seamless experience for districts when they build the routes, that same information, one database is getting shared out to parents, shared out to drivers, shared out to district staff. And of course, other big components uh, districts are looking at are field trip and activity trip uh, processes and fleet maintenance. So I just wanted to give a quick highlight on the screen to talk about the ability that we have to really solve all of these challenges. We've got modules that we can work with you on to implement routing, driver navigation, ridership tracking, parent apps, field trips, fleet maintenance. But also if you're in a place where you don't have a lot of this technology implemented today and you're seeing all of these things that can be done and maybe should be done, uh, there's a, a level of overwhelm that starts to set in. Uh, how are we gonna put all of these moving pieces in at once? What's the adoption gonna look like for my staff or for our community? or for our drivers, so it should maybe in a, a little bit older demographic. We understand some of those challenges too, right? What we think of it as is this idea of moving your way into transportation nirvana, right? We find, you know, going from the Flintstone suggestions is a, a term we use a lot of the time, uh, going from very little technology to trying to put all of the technology in at once. Some districts could do it and they have the bandwidth and they have the need and they have the priority and they want to get everything going. But for a lot of districts, what we found to be really successful is to scale up your technology platform. Right? You don't need to do everything at once. It's important that you're working with a partner like TransFinder that is able to offer all these solutions. But a lot of the time, what makes the most sense is to do it piece by piece to make sure you're successfully rolling it out. For us, our routing software is really at the core of everything we do. Right? We think everything else kind of falls downstream of that, the ability to share information to parents or provide driver navigation is all dependent on having a reliable routing platform. From there, we often will recommend bringing in GPS so that you can verify, I now have a, a safe, reliable plan. How much is that matching up with my drivers and what they're actually doing? And do I have ways to be able to send out emails or notifications to parents there so that I can let them know when changes are happening? Right, with that, you can start bringing in live tracking of vehicles. So if you have a breakdown, you know where the vehicle's at. 
you can respond to that quickly, vehicle telematics, letting you know if there are any engine alerts or idle times, uh, other behaviors you may care about tracking there. A lot of dashboards and reporting can start to tie in once you've implemented these pieces with transportation, GPS, uh, in-vehicle uh, telematics. From there, a lot of the time it makes sense to say, great, I now have a safe plan. I'm now confirming that plan is happening out on the road. My drivers are, are doing as instructed. Now I feel really confident to start to notify parents and say, hey parents, this is what the plan looks like for today, and even provide them an ETA as the bus is on the way. Right? If I have a reliable plan of action, I could start giving drivers turn-by-turn -turn directions, right? maybe even cutting out the paper route sheets that they're using and bringing in tablets into the vehicle so that they can get spoken directions while they're on the road. That's been huge for sub-drivers, but even non-sub-drivers today are being asked to do double runs and runs they've never done before. And the ability to just hop on a, a bus, hit go on the tablet and start navigating has been a huge improvement for uh, a lot of districts. And of course, with that, you start getting more information, more analytics on what's happening on your, your roads and routes and finding better and better efficiency there. We talk about transportation in Rana again is when all of these pieces are, are working live and in unison, maybe bringing in RFID and student ridership. And so again, you can work across the platform here where you have a bus breakdown and your staff instantly knows what students are on that bus, which students have already scanned off the bus, uh, where is the vehicle located now? Who's in the area that can come help out? What is the load balance of, of buses in real time? All of this information starts to pull in together. But like I said, it's usually not an overnight process, right? What we want to do is we want to work with you to see what's a, a process that's going to make sense for your district based on your size, your staff. Uh, and we've done this a lot of times. So we've, we've got a lot of experience implementing this technology. That's my groundwork. A uh, little, little foundation on what it looks like to talk about technology and bring it into your district. From there, what I'd love to do is to jump into some of the actual platform pieces. So I'm going to talk through some of the technology tools we have, some of the benefits that some of our clients have seen by bringing the new technology tools in, uh, and why it may make sense for, for you a little bit. I mentioned routing is really at the core of what we do. Uh, again, we think this is such an important piece of it, and, and we've seen other vendors in the market try to say, you know, you don't really need a, a routing platform. Your drivers know what they're doing, you know, just throw GPS tracking or throw a tablet in the bus, the routing kind of comes after the fact. We find that that is not a, a good system for making sure that you're running efficient routes, running safe routes, knowing who should be on a bus versus who is, or being able to compare our drivers doing what the district expects them to do and transportation expects. So routing is, is really at the core of a lot of what we do and our routing tools are incredibly powerful, but also intuitive and simple, right? It's a key that, you know, we're, we're not living in 1990s anymore. Uh, some of those older interfaces where you needed a, a book and a manual to be able to learn how to build a route, those days are gone. It's important now that if you're gonna hire a new staff or bring them on, that they can start routing within a matter of days or weeks rather than maybe in a, a couple of years, I can get them up to speed and, and maybe uh, be ready to retire. All right, so some tools we'll talk about here are with our routing platform, the ability to automate a lot of the work. So what we see is districts without some of this technology in place are doing very manual processes. Uh, even if you're on an older platform, you may be manually entering students into your system, manually assigning them, determining who uh, qualifies for busing and who doesn't. Today with RouteFinder Plus, all of that work can be automated. Also some optimization and efficiency tools. These are tools that, you know, they, they certainly can get a bad rap and I think that's uh, that's fair, right? There's, there's no one click solution. If any transportation vendor says, hey, you don't need to actually route the kids, just press the button, the software does it, that's a person that's never worked with student transportation, right? We know that it requires your expertise, your local knowledge, but the tools really should be there to help optimize and, and create more efficient routes as a foundation for you, right? As a, a tool that helps you speed up your workflow. And so that's definitely what RouteFinder Plus does. It allows uh, users to enable their local knowledge without trying to replace it or compete with, with your information. And of course, the last piece is easy communication. We talk about it all the time here at TransFinder. The goal of our software is to make the phone call stop so if you're hearing phone calls from your district staff, 
from parents, from bus drivers. How can we solve those problems? How can we make the phone calls stop by putting the information into their hands? Uh, most of our districts that have implemented our parent app now, we'll talk about it more. Their, their number one thing when they answer the phone now is check the app, go to the app. They shouldn't need to be providing information out. It should already be shared across the, uh, the stakeholders. So let's talk about some things that really uh, highlight the benefit of having technology. One is just accessible data. Uh, right now, if you're doing a manual system or you're using an older platform, it can be very hard to find the data that you're looking for, to export the data that you need. With RouteFinder Plus, we make it very, very easy. So for one thing, we're automating the import of all of your student information, right? We should be connecting with your SIS, whoever your SIS is. With over 2,300 clients, we work with pretty much every SIS in the uh, in the country right now. And during that import, we can do a lot of automation as well, right? We can automatically assign students to school boundaries. We can assign them to eligibility zones. Do they qualify for busing or not? We can assign them to hazardous regions, regions other information like that. And then we can even assign them to a bus stop automatically. Our system uses uh, a totally unique process for assigning students to the safest stop location rather than simply assigning them to the, the closest stop location by, again, bringing your local knowledge into the stops and, and mapping. Same with getting data out of it, just as easy as it is to bring the data in and automate a lot of that workflow. It should just uh, be just as easy to kind of pull this data out. So if at any point you need to know what's a, a daily mileage look like for my fleet or what vehicles are, are running longer routes versus shorter routes, what does my cost per mile look like, uh, what's my student ridership look like, all of this should be accessible with a click of a button, be able to run a report out or pull up a dashboard. We'll show some examples of what we can do with that, uh, but getting data out of the system is, is hugely important as well it all the time, right? Your leadership comes to you and, and asks very basic questions. Where's this bus? What's going on with the student? Uh, and without these tools, it can be very hard to be able to have the answer to those questions. So as I talk about automatic workflows, the idea is with our system, uh, things you're doing manually right now, maybe pinning one by one, uh, RouteFinder Plus can make a lot of that work much faster. I can select multiple students and tell the system automatically create stops for my kids here. I can make sure for special needs or kindergarten students, they're all right side pickup if needed. Again, that's very important for the driver when they're out on the road. And I can even tell the system to say, how many vehicles do I need to pick up 32 kids that I have on the, the bus assigned here? If these are special needs routes that have vans, I may need to break that up over Maybe three trips is what the system's telling me here, right? And I can hit apply and let the system automatically route those 32 students. So that's what I'm talking about when I say improving the, the workflows and making that a little bit faster. That's a process that I'm sure all of you are going through right now, but you know, uh, the amount of time it takes to determine where students are located and the best driving path and the, the most efficient sequence, that can be a, a time consuming process. Like I said, I don't want to pretend like it's a one-click solution here with TransFinder, but it does give you a much faster foundation to be able to work from. The efficiency metrics are really key with our platform as well, right? So as you're doing the work in the system, uh, what kind of impact are you having on your costs and your mileage? So with our system, again, as you find efficiencies, as you reduce runs, or for smaller districts, maybe a lot of the time there's no way to, to cut an entire trip, which can be huge savings, but even the ability to cut mileage, you can see that add up, especially with gas prices, propane gas, uh, prices, whatever you're paying for there, the ability to cut even five or 10% of your mileage can have huge savings and costs for the district. One thing that people love about our platform is not only are they finding these efficiencies, but it's very easy for them to output it. Right? It helps them go to the board and say, this is the kind of impact, this is the kind of savings we're having. So as you're thinking about technology being too expensive for, for your district, maybe based on the size, you also have to kind of think about what kind of savings could I get out of this? How quickly could this pay for itself? And how easily could I go and justify the cost by saying, look, this is the kind of change. This is what we're spending in gas today. This is what a 5% change in, in our gas utilization might look like. 
from there, let's jump into our parent app. So again, parent app offers a lot of functionality and of course, a big reason why parents are looking for it is they want more insight. A lot of the time why districts want it is, like I said, they wanna, they wanna make those phone calls stop. But there is a lot of other benefits we're seeing at our, our parent apps here. So a lot that we can do with our parent app, Stop Finder, whether you're just simply sharing planned route information so parents know where's the bus stop, what time does it pick up, or if you're sharing actual live vehicle tracking so parents can get alerts when the bus is on the way. We offer a ton of automated alerts so a parent can get an ETA notification, right? The bus is five minutes, 10, 15, 20 minutes out. They can set those alerts and get automatically pinged when the bus is on the way. Geo alerts have been really popular as well. Sometimes parents wanna set a custom zone and say, let me know when the bus arrives at this location, maybe when it gets to school so that I know my, my student got to school safely. Attendance notifications have been a big one, right? Once you start integrating student ridership, as students scan on and off the bus, parents can get pinged, let them know, hey, my student boarded safely. Or a big one that we see is, hey, my student got off the bus, but it looks like they're across town, maybe at their friend's house, right? They can see all that right from their phone, Again, you just have to go through your mind to think about how many phone calls have I gotten about any of these topics that now with a parent app, parent adoption, they would be looking at the app rather than calling me. And of course, the last one is things like district notifications, right? So if you are making changes to uh, transportation, you can easily send those notification out to parents. They'll get a push. And the nice thing is with a parent app, it comes directly to their phone. They don't need to check a website. They don't need to check uh, their email, anything like that they can get pinged and notified directly on their phone, letting them know about any kind of changes. So I mentioned uh, parent apps are, are a really big driver from parents wanting better insight, but what we're seeing too is that it's also having a positive impact on the school district and on-time arrival, right? So you can imagine that the bus is, is normally stuck waiting for students or they're not arriving on time at the bus stop, that's having a downwind effect there where buses are arriving to school late, which we know has huge impacts on, on student learning, right? So with parent ET and alerts, what we're seeing is not only a reduction in parent complaints, we're seeing improved rider satisfaction when they know the bus is on the way, and we're also seeing improvements to on-time arrival. I will say one thing that's key about any parent app is the adoption piece. Right? We work with a lot of districts that are coming from a, a parent solution that had very low adoption, you know, as low as 20, 30% of parents were using the app. Does not matter how good or great or your tool is, if your parents aren't using it, you're not getting the full value out of it. So what we've really seen is our experts have worked with districts to be able to promote it to parents, to promote it with public media, uh, to get it in the news, to get it uh, the word out. And we're seeing huge adoption rates, right? We're seeing as high as 70, 80% of communities uh, adopting the parent app. And again, that's 70 or 80 less phone calls that you're getting from parents. We're moving quickly. And if there are questions, uh, there we go. We do see some questions uh, in here. So I do see uh, people mentioning maybe a lower adoption rate of the community. That's a big challenge, right? And we, we understand trying to get your community to, to adopt and, and bring on a parent app uh, can be a tough piece, right? That is why we've tried to create a, a ton of useful resources for the district, right? If you're not taking steps to link it on your, your district website, email parents, send mailers out to parents, put it in that, right? Key times can be really big, right? At the beginning of school year, you have parents coming in for meet the teacher nights, events like that. Uh, districts can even put up a QR code for the, the parent app right there to, to meet the teacher night. The last one is really driven internally by your department, right? Again, if parents are calling you and the, the number one response is not make sure you're checking the app or go to the app for that kind of information, uh, again, parents sometimes will continue to rely on you. So. Again, working with our, our implementation experts, we really uh, have been able to see really good adoptions using this. Let's talk in vehicle. So talking the transitioning from parents who are drivers here for a moment, I wanna talk about the driver solutions. So uh, quite a bit that we're doing for drivers, including turn-by-turn -turn navigation, 
but also within the, the tablets on the bus, we're also doing student ridership tracking. We're allowing drivers and districts to digitize any paperwork that they're doing today in uh, paper forms and bring it in as digital forms. And of course, the last piece people are, are really getting out of the in-vehicle tablets is that ability to, to do GPS tracking, right? So you can see where my bus is live, what's their arrival look like at school. So we could talk through a few of these pieces, but ridership has been a really key uh, factor. We've been hearing more and more districts looking at it. This is a technology that's not super widely adopted across the, the country right now, but more and more schools are starting to look for it. And so a few reasons right, why, obviously safety and peace of mind is a big driver of student adoption, student ridership, right? Parents wanna know when my kids are getting on the bus, the district wants that peace of mind of knowing who's riding and who's not riding. Uh, again, this can be really key if you have things like a, a bus breakdown. Uh, a school may want to make sure to notify parents, but I don't want to email every parent that rides this bus. I'd rather notify and reach out to the parents specifically that were on the bus. And I'm hearing with how technology changes, a lot of the time the districts are, are falling behind, right? If there's a bus accident on the road, every one of those kids on the bus has a cell phone. Their parents are already getting alerted. So you're, you're already a little bit behind by the time you've heard, parents have already heard, they've gotten the text message, but it's important that you have insight into what's going on, right? So with student ridership, again, students can use RFID cards to scan onto the bus, off of the bus, and you can see exactly who's riding and who's not riding in real time. That peace of mind is a, is a big one, but what we've also seen is the impact and efficiency. Right, so today a lot of transportation departments, a lot of districts are routing for every student in their district. If you go to school, you get a, a, a seat. The problem is that's leading to very low efficiency on the buses, right? You can see buses as low as 10, 20% utilization where uh, if we were actually tracking ridership, what you start to see is who's actually riding, who needs a stop, what stops can we cut? And you're seeing entire reductions in, in trips or vehicles needed. Now, at a smaller district, again, maybe you're not cutting an entire bus, but you, cer you certainly can cut some of the time and distance that you're out on the road if you know who's riding and who's not riding. Right? We think about these kind of metrics and analytics. Uh, we've seen some of the kind of following average riderships as we start to track this. At high school, it's going to be much, much lower with 50 to 60% ridership. Elementary, you generally see 80% ridership but you can see what kind of impact this would have if you're assigning a bus for every one of these students or assigning a C for every one of these students, your efficiency is gonna drop incredibly. The last piece people are really getting out of the ridership piece is making their state reporting much easier. So a lot of states do require information on how many riders you have. Right now, states that, that deal with that are doing a manual count. So anyone on the call now that is doing uh, ridership reporting is, is fully aware of how they have to manually go and, and do a day of counting. They print out paper sheets and, and get that information from drivers. By tracking it this way, what we're seeing is districts could see where's the heavier load, where's the lower load. They could report the numbers that make the most sense. A lot of the time they've seen better reimbursement back because they know who's actually riding when they have high ridership and they're able to report according to that. But you're also seeing big improvements in things like Medicaid reimbursement if, if your state allows you to, uh, to get reimbursed for special ed riders too. Other big uh, piece that's, that's key. So again, as you jump around and talk about all this technology from routing to parent apps to driver tools, it's key to keep in mind how these tools sync up and, and work together, right? So they're not standalone devices. They're not separate vendors you call in every time they break down. Uh, these are all part of our platform. And so what that means is as parents are getting ETA alerts, that's because it's tied to exactly what the driver is doing on the road. That becomes a really big point if a, a driver, say, gets assigned to a double run. That's going to change what their arrival time is to a, a specific point if they get additional stops added. Same with attendance, right? Uh, being able to see that information in real time means that as the student swipes on the tablet, there's no overnight push or information like that. Again, no website they need to go to. In real time, a parent can get a notification right on their phone, letting them know, hey, your student just swiped on or off the bus there.
I appreciate any questions coming in. Feel free to to keep pinging those uh, as they come up. Happy to do my best juggling uh, juggling what we're talking about here and, and addressing any questions from the group. Last piece I like to talk about is the district access and the outputs from the tools. So again, a lot of the time we've been talking here about the phone calls and how uh, a lot of these tools are, are built to reduce phone calls. Same thing across the district, right? Your school administrators are often taking phone calls, like where's my bus? Did my student come to school today? Things like that. And by opening up your transportation information to school administrators, they can see that information quickly. It can respond out to parents or district staff without the need to call and, and, uh, and ask you. Right, so we offer a ton of district tools with viewfinder. Users can log in from anywhere. That means even from a mobile device. So a big use case I've seen is uh, maybe teachers that are uh, boarding students onto a bus, especially that first week or two. Students have no idea what bus they're riding. They can be right out at the, uh, the bus lot at the school and say, hey, let me pull up your name. And it looks like you're on bus 203. Okay, so viewfinder has been a really powerful tool. Same with sharing live information for things like GPS and ridership, right? So uh, obviously if you have the bandwidth for dispatch, you may wanna be keeping an eye on what does your GPS look like? Do I have sub drivers that are getting lost or off path? Uh, do I have buses that are running behind and running late? But a lot of the time districts tell us, hey, I don't have the bandwidth for dispatch. I'm not sitting there watching it live. That's all right. The same information can be run to you through reports after the fact. Right? A big reason people are looking for the kind of GPS integration is they want to know what percent of my schools, my buses are getting to school on time. Right? Most of them have a very high attainment expectation, maybe 95% of the time they should be arriving on time. You can easily run out a daily report letting you know what is your on-time performance look like. And like I said, if you are getting those phone calls saying, hey, where's my bus? It's running late today. Anyone within the district that has access should be able to log in and see those vehicles live and see where they are, be able to respond to those questions that are coming in. Yeah, I do see a question here about integrating ridership info into Child Plus. So integrating with third-party uh, platforms like a Child Plus is a great question. One of the nice things with Plus is we make it very easy to both import and export data. So we are able to export any of their, our ridership data. So if that's something that needs to be pushed to a third-party platform like that Child Plus, we would absolutely allow a district to take that and automate and, and export and send that out to another system. So we send our data to other platforms all the time right now, whether it's for an auto dialer or a parent app or uh, anything like that, that's something that you can easily pull the data out of our Finder Plus for. Yeah, I see another great question here too about GPS. So the question is whether you're pulling GPS from the tablet or whether there's dedicated hardware that's needed for that. That's a really good question. This has been changing a lot in the industry here. The answer is you can really do either. There's benefits and drawbacks to both. So the tablet definitely will provide GPS. And with our tablet, you can see live vehicle location, historical information, uh, you can track on-time performance, all of that just by pulling the GPS off the tablet. Uh, there are some drawbacks to it that a dedicated GPS uh, still offers benefits for, which is the dedicated GPS units would plug into the onboard diagnostics, so you'd get additional information like the door open events, uh, hard stopping, idle times, and also uh, check engine alerts and, and diagnostics like that. So there are some benefits to standalone hardware for GPS, but we're seeing more and more districts that are not utilizing some of those functions say, look, I want the tablet anyway, I want the navigation, and that's gonna provide the feed for live vehicle tracking and, and performance uh, information that I'm looking for. It's a great question. Last piece on district access is, uh, again, uh, users can do a quick search to find any information they need, including, uh, like I said, GPS information, student ridership information, planned route information. All of that is easily accessible to anyone within the district there. So uh, really powerful tools. And like I said, again, it's about driving uh, 
less phone calls, more insight, and really keeping all of your stakeholders on the same page across the board. I see a few questions, and I'll, I'll try to answer these live rather than typing responses back here, but let's take a look and see. Uh, what about creating an accident seating report by seat location? That's a, a really great, great question there. So uh, a seat report, right now, uh, there are a few different ways to be able to do a seat report. We do allow you to, to track seating within the platform. Uh, so you can keep a, a user-defined field for seats and you can verify that information. Or we've even worked with some districts to be able to create a seating report as a form that they can fill out after an incident happens. Got a, a specific question about using a specific GPS vendors with TransFinder. So that's a good question. I think that lines up with the, what I was just talking about, the difference of using a, a tablet for GPS versus using a dedicated GPS vendor. There's a lot of great uh, GPS vendors in the industry, and we work with a lot of them, including Zonar, Sansara, REI, uh, and we're happy to work with them and, and have those partnerships. They do offer a few uh, unique benefits that you can't get with something like a tablet. And like I said, a lot of it is from that onboard diagnostics that they're plugging into, right? So getting engine alerts, uh, being able to get better information about driver behavior, like I said, where they're idling, where they're hard stopping. And a lot of these uh, vendors offer other tools as well. They offer uh, uh, ins vehicle inspections and, and resources like that that could be really helpful too. Let's take a look. The question started flowing in, so I appreciate it. Uh, if a bus is having issues and we need to swap to a different bus, how's that information updated to parents? That's a great question, right? And that's one that we've definitely seen and struggled with. Uh, if anyone goes and looks at any parent app reviews on an app store, a lot of the time, some of those low scores that you're seeing are really driven by things like that, right? A, a vehicle uh, breaks down and, and you need to swap vehicles, that can have a, a down chain effect where parents aren't getting notified. So. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this, but today we do make it really easy for a driver to simply, from the tablet, update the vehicle they're driving, so if they do have a breakdown. Now that said, we are starting to work with uh, a few other solutions, like our, our GPS solutions, where we can pull the vehicle number from the uh, GPS to be able to automatically update what bus is being driven. So we are finding ways to solve that, because again, if you ask drivers to do it, that works most of the time, but you're, you're still going to have some fail points. But what we've started to do is automatically switch what vehicle based on the GPS unit that's installed. It's a little more technical, but as a really good question. Uh, hopefully it, it does help, but it is a piece that you should be thinking about. If you're rolling out a parent app, it's incredibly important that you're sharing accurate information. So if you say bus 20 is coming and bus 20 is not coming that day, you've got to get an easy way to be able to update that information for sure. One other big question. Uh, Yeah, here's a great question. So what about a, a routing platform being able to uh, differentiate between a, a yellow bus and maybe a special needs van, right? So uh, lots of changes that come between vehicles like that. So a, certain roads that a yellow bus is not gonna be able to get down that a van can, turns that you might be willing to let it take. That's a great question that you know we solve in a unique way. So we've actually, with our Route Finder Plus, started offering the ability to create unique travel scenarios is what we call them, because we know that as a, a bus is out, that's a yellow bus, so there's gonna be different rules than a, a special needs van, and so you can actually build those rules in place. You can build rules for AM trips versus PM, yellow bus for special ed, uh, even special rules for temporary construction, and what's key is those rules not only apply when you're routing, but they also apply for the tablet. So when the driver's out on the road and they're navigating, you can have those rules, whether it's a, a yellow bus or a van, uh, if a driver gets off course and they need to get rerouted. Really, really important. We wanna make sure we're rerouting drivers safely. So being able to put those different rules in place allows us to do that. Really great questions from uh, from the group there. If I didn't get to, uh, to one of your questions here, and by all means, keep them coming, uh, I'll try to review these and, and make sure to follow up uh, when we wrap up here. Dashboards and reports is the last piece I was just talking about. Uh, districts love the ability to have dashboards uh, up on a TV screen so everybody can see key, uh, key insights that they're, they're sharing, KPIs that they may wanna uh, expose. 
but reports are a really powerful tool as well. One thing that our clients love is the ability to schedule reports. Uh, so if you have users that need access to your information, but maybe they're not logging into our platform every day, what's nice is with a scheduled report, you can get that information that emails out to them automatically. I know I've got some districts that use this really effectively for things like field trips. So every school administrator gets a uh, report emailed into their inbox saying, hey, here's your school's field trip. Here's the driver, their phone number, what time they should arrive. No need to call me about field trips. You have all the information right there in your inbox. So from there, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the challenges districts are seeing uh, by making the investment in technology, and I want to talk through a few of them. I see a few more questions, so before I talk through these challenges investing, let's take a, a look and see what else is coming up from uh, from the crowd here. Crowd, I appreciate uh, the active engagement. How does the system determine uh, where the stop location should be? That's a really great question. So as far as determining where the uh, stop location should be. This is all done from the routing platform. And it's again, why we say the routing system is, is such an important part of the platform, because all of the rest of it, what's shared out to a parent, what's shared out to a driver, is all based on that, uh, uh, that routing information. So you can go ahead and set that uh, stop location. Now that said, you can verify where the driver actually stops from using a tablet or using dedicated GPS because we'll be able to see where those students are scanning on or where the vehicle's coming to a stop there as well. Yeah, also, uh, you know, users that see a lot of the time with routing software, a lot of the settings are, are things you have to work through. I see a, a question here about U-turn settings. That's one we can definitely follow up with. But uh, as I think about U-turn settings, I really just think about, these are, are some of the in the weeds things you'll find as you start getting into the system. Uh, what's important is that the system allows you to build out a policy or rules so that as new people come on, they aren't making human errors. They're not uh, assigning students to cross the street they shouldn't cross or having a bus U-turn where they shouldn't turn. So that's a good one. I think that's one that that uh, maybe we'll follow up with after. All right, like I said, I wanted to talk through a few of these challenges because we hear these all the time. I've talked a bunch to you about some of the tools we offer and, and how we see those helping in the industry, but how do you deal with problems like software is too expensive to invest in, right? What I really encourage anyone here that's interested to do is to take a look at some of the case studies we have on our website. I'll share a few examples here. Steve Leslie is a great one who talked about by finding fuel efficiencies with our platform. He was able to save significant costs by reducing mileage and stops. So efficiency is one of the biggest drivers of, uh, benefit that you get out of the the system for sure. A lot of districts tell me we run a really efficient uh, operation and that's true a lot of the time, but it's very hard to maintain and keep up with, right? You may be peak efficiency on day one of school, but as you get six months into the year, 10 months into the year, that efficiency starts to drop as new students are coming in, there's change of addresses, things are moving around. Having a system like PLUS allows you to maintain that efficiency and see what kind of changes are happening. Another good question coming up. We'll, we'll weave the questions in. Does the program automatically determine the distance from one stop to the next? Yeah, that's one of the great things about having a, a full GIS system like Route Finder Plus. We're able to calculate all the distance for you. One big one we hear is a student's distance from school, right? If uh, a student doesn't qualify for distance, uh, sorry, qualify for transportation if they're less than a mile from school, you'll hear from that parent if, uh, if they're one point one mile away and they better get their busing. So we're calculating the distance to school, the distance between stops, the distance of routes, uh, maybe even deadhead mileage. That's another big one that, that districts are concerned about, how much our bus is driving empty versus uh, driving with students in it. So all of those distances are all calculated and again, something you can easily pull out of the system. What about the challenge that there's no time? This is a, a very real one for Districts that are overwhelmed and, and trying to maintain transportation day to day as it is, the idea of implementing software is a really overwhelming thought. We do understand that. What we're hearing though is that by actually implementing the technology, they're finding they're getting a lot more time back to put towards other uses. 
right? There's a lot of manual work that happens today for districts that don't have a, a software solution in place as far as manually updating student records, manually making changes, manually assigning each student to a school location, uh, eligibility zone, uh, an actual route, a uh, bus stop. Uh, by automating a lot of that work, we're finding that districts are getting that time back. Now that said, there is gonna be some, uh, some time spent learning. Our implementation team are absolute pros at, at trying to find a way to get you to learn our system within the bandwidth that you have, the availability that you have. We'll talk about our implementation, uh, what kind of services we offer, but the idea of uh, not having enough time, not having enough time is the biggest reason to invest in, in the software. So again, I encourage you to take a look at our website, transfinder.com, uh, Washington County School District talked specifically uh, about what the process was going from trying to work on, on maps on the wall and manually pin kids to bringing in our platform and what a major game changer it was for them. Last one, and I hear this quite a bit, is we're just too small, right? We're too small to need uh, software. I think the reality is, and we've talked about a lot of the challenges now, transportation has just changed so drastically that this is, is becoming less and less of a reality for districts, right? Another great story that I recommend uh, is taking a look at Whittier Union High School, and they talked about just how much uh, they were able to improve their relationship with their community by bringing in some of these technology tools. And again, it does not have to be everything at once, right? You don't need to think about how am I gonna manage student RFID cards and tablets and all these different costs. Uh, a lot of our districts are bringing the technology in piece by piece and simply setting up a parent app to share reliable information helps build better trust, transparency with your community. It's uh, seeing huge improvements there. So no matter the size of your district, we have, uh, we have districts with as few as four, five, six vehicles that are bringing in technology to, to be able to improve their operation, uh, improve their safety, their efficiency, and improve their relationships with their district and with their community, for sure. It's really important that as you're thinking about this and thinking about how does this make financial sense, is this a, an investment that's worthwhile or is now the right time to do it, that there really is very real cost to doing nothing, right? Again, you think about the idea that very standard today for running a, a single route, a single vehicle, uh, you're seeing an operating cost as high as $70,000 a year for one bus, right? If there's efficiency opportunities to reduce that mileage, to cut an entire trip, that can have massive uh, payoffs there that you're easily paying within your first year uh, for the investment of bringing in software. The driver shortages are very real constraints that we see people dealing with, and we have tons of stories of people being able to utilize our efficiency tools, our optimization tools to reduce their routes and, and deal with those shortages. So just something worth considering, right? Considering the costs that you have today, the costs that you would see with, with software, and trying to look at what the net benefit would be, you know, one year, two years, three years out, we can certainly help you make that argument if that's an argument that needs to go to uh, higher levels within the, the district, go to your board. We can help take some of the information about what you're doing today and help make that ROI case for why technology is worth investing in, for sure. For those of you still with me and, and still thinking maybe this is something that, uh, that makes sense, let me talk a little bit about our implementation. So if you do have, hesitancy there, say, you know, how are we gonna learn this? How are we gonna uh, get this up and running? How are we gonna be successful with this new technology? Uh, talk about our implementation process a little bit. And this is a great one, right? Right off the bat here, uh, I've got a question of how long does the setup and training uh, usually take? Uh, that question uh, is about as easy to answer as how long does it take to, to learn a new language? Uh, so the challenge really is how much bandwidth do you have to to put towards bringing this in and implementing it? Uh, I can go through a couple of uh, overviews and, and give uh, some basic ideas, but just so you understand what implementation looks like with us, for one, you're working with a dedicated team. So TransFinder provides you with a dedicated project ma manager. That's going to be your point of contact throughout your entire implementation. A data specialist that's going to do a, a lot of the setup for you as far as integrating with your student information system, integrating with any other software tools that you need to, 
bringing in data for your, your staff, your vehicles, uh, your student records. And in a lot of cases, we could even bring in uh, route and stop information into our system as part of the setup there. From there, you have a, a dedicated one-on-one -on -one regular trainer. So our training is usually about a, a six-month training process. We are working one-on-one -on -one weekly with the with your trainer. And with that, you're doing things like uh, managing your map, you know, uh, building your routes, setting up the, the communication tools, getting ready for school open. Uh, and we work with you through that school open process and it can work with you even to roll over data from one year to the next. Lots of online resources, uh, resources as well. So if time's an issue as far as, you know, throughout the day, I'm out, I'm driving a bus. Our online resources are available 24 seven. So we've got entire online guides and courses that you can sign up for and go at a self-paced process. Uh, these tools are really great too for onboarding new staff. So maybe you have your router get using our software and a year later they move on and you need to bring new staff in. They can easily get up to speed with our, our program uh, using our online tools. And then tons of channels of support, right? So as you're working with us, Obviously, dedicated resources are, are key, but we do offer webinars throughout the year on things like rollovers, driver shortage issues, how we help rolling out parent apps. And then we have tons of ways to stay in touch with us, whether it's through email, chat, scheduling calls and, and support, lots of resources there. So this is a big question. How long does the setup and training usually take? Uh, what I would recommend is reaching out and, and talking with, uh, with one of our, our consultants. So what we can do is we can build a custom implementation for you. Uh, here we are in April. So what I would expect is anyone that's looking at this and considering this, their ideal scenarios, they would like to be up and ready for the fall. Uh, what I'd say is we can absolutely make something like that happen. We just need to start sooner rather than later and we need to talk with you and work one-on-one. -on -one. And what we'll do is our implementation team can really build out a, a custom implementation plan that makes sense based on what bandwidth do you have? How large is your team? What's your availability look like? And what are your goals and targets that you're looking to hit? So Matthew, I appreciate that question. I hope that that helps a little bit there. Here's my last piece that I have that I wanna make sure I'm sharing. I know we've got just a few minutes left, but for anyone that's, uh, that's joined the webinar with me so far today, I want to highlight one thing that TransFinder is doing uh, across the industry. So whether you're a client with us today or not, it does not matter. We have a, a program called Top Transportation Teams. Last year, we uh, awarded six school districts, uh, three districts that are, are larger, three districts uh, smaller, less than 100 staff. Uh, and we're looking to do the same thing this year. Again, you don't need to work with TransFinder today. You don't need to be a client. If you've never heard of us, that's okay. Uh, what we ask that you do is you go to toptransportationteams.com and you can register and sign your team up to win. We'll talk a little bit about what uh, the winning teams get. Uh, again, great press and coverage and really a, a lot of satisfaction knowing that you've got one of the best transportation teams in the US here. So I do encourage everybody to go take a look. Toptransportationteams.com is our website where you can see about registering there. I have just a few minutes left. Uh, I'd love to, you know, if anyone has any other questions they want to put in chat, I'm happy to to help answer any of those. But otherwise, I really do hope today's session was uh, was useful, gave you some interesting insight. If any of the technology pieces you want to know about more, definitely reach out to us. Uh, you can reach us at marketing at transfinder.com, or you can talk to, I'm sure, uh, one of our, our consultants that has reached out and emailed and invited you to this webinar today, feel free to follow up with them. We could talk a little bit more about the technology and we could also talk about how can we make the case for uh, getting your district on board with investing in the technology. Thank you so much, everybody, for, uh, for attending. I really appreciated it. Uh, hopefully you have a good rest of your day.